In this study, I will show, according to the makeup of the throne of God, that the footstool of God, is in fact, the dome over the earth. The throne of God in His heaven, has a footstool, and that footstool, is a type of the earth. God said, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Those are not just words, but is actually a picture of the throne of God in heaven, which the earth and location, will be patterned after. I want to first, look at the throne that Solomon built for himself, to get an idea of what we will be working with. Scripture says, Moreover the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with pure gold. And there were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne and stays on each side of the sitting place, and two lions standing by the stays. The reading of the scripture says, The footstool is fastened to the throne, and not a standalone piece of furniture. This is important, so keep this fresh in your memory. Now let's look again at the throne in heaven. The throne in heaven, is one piece of furniture, but with two sections, and that being the chair, with a foot rest attached. The throne chair represents, the government of God, operating in the spiritual realm, and the footstool represents, the coming government of God, to operate in the physical realm, after the wrath of God has stamped out the resistance on the earth. Even though Satan introduced the first sin in heaven, the war against sin, and the destruction of sin, will be fought on earth, in the footstool of God, where God will put Satan, under his feet. The throne of God, is a picture of creation. The throne, or the kingdom of heaven, the government of God itself, was created first, as a habitation for the Father, and the Son, with His holy angels to operate in the spiritual realm. Then, He created the earth, His footstool, against or touching His spiritual kingdom, to be for physical things, to live, move, and have their being. Now, let's find out how God attached His footstool, our earth, to His throne in heaven. First, we will move His kingdom up, so we can work with more of the water, under His kingdom of heaven. Scripture says, When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. Pay attention here. Highlighted in the yellow, it says the heavens, plural, as in more than one. On the day of creation, after God had created his government and throne, in the spiritual realm. God created at least, three heavens in the physical realm, his footstool, and the first one was a hard heaven, he called, the firmament. Listen to how Job describes, the making of this hard heaven. Scripture says, Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong, and is a molten looking glass? Spread out means to mash down flat, or to stamp down, and to push, or pull across a surface. This ingredient must be super strong at its completion, yet flexible during the forming stage. And that material would have the consistency of molten glass, hot lava rocks, or liquid magma, that would come to be form and polished, to a shining glass dome, spread out to cover a certain area of space. Of course, God did this in a fashion as only He could but we can do it also manually, as seen in this clip. You gather the materials for the project. And you mix it to a certain texture. Then, you stamp it out flat by forcing it through the rollers. And while it is still flexible, you bend and mold it into your desired state. Which in this example is a humongous glass dome. This takes us back to our initial scripture. 
The word compass means a circle, a ring, or a circuit. And that circle is placed upon a specific area of the flat surface, or the face of the deep, which is the sea, the ocean of water. Putting this all together, it might look something like this. According to Genesis, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. God divides the water under his kingdom into two parts, by placing the firmament in it. This is that material that was used and began as a molten hot liquid, which was stamped down and spread it out in the water below his kingdom, causing water to be above and around the firmament, as well as water, under and in, the firmament. And that firmament was vaulted upwards and rounded off at the top, reaching and touching the bottom of the area which is the kingdom of God. And according to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, the bottom of that vaulted creation was circular, which circle rested upon the face of the water it enclosed. When Scripture says, It is He, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. This is not hyperbole, it is literally the truth. God is sitting directly upon the dome firmament, which has a circle at its bottom, that is resting upon the level and flat waters, that according to Genesis 1 verse 9 and 10, the earth would come to appear out of. Of course, there are those who vehemently oppose this conclusion, and will fight back calling me names, such as a flat earth retard, or a science denier, along with a host of other negative things. Do you know, that our government lies to you, and pressures our institutions to do the same? Did you know that science journals, encyclopedias, and our armed forces, prior to the signing of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959, had literature speaking about the dome, the firmament, or the vault over the earth? God expected us to find it in these last days, and to proclaim it to the world, and to investigate it, and to talk about it. For God is extremely proud of it and wants us to make it known to all the living. Scripture says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, His hard heaven, the dome, the vault, the arch, sheweth His handiwork. God wants us to see it and brag about the God who made it. But of course our government can't have that. The populace believing and trusting in God, and not relying on the government for all our needs, thus, stripping them of their ability to deceive, and steal from us, to get rich. And they have done, and are doing, an excellent job with their deception. Now back to the scriptures. We left off with the point that God is sitting upon the firmament, which bottom touches the top of the dome of the firmament, which bottom is a circle, joined to the earth. Here is a second witness, to this same fact. Scripture says, And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. This is saying, for living creatures, descended from God's heaven, passing down through the hard firmament. And Ezekiel noted the appearance of the firmament above their head saying, It was as the color of the terrible crystal, which is to say, the firmament was brilliantly clear, and as a shining looking glass. Then, Scripture continues saying, And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. This is saying, immediately above the firmament, above the four living creatures' heads, Ezekiel saw the likeness of a throne, and the likeness of a man seated upon it which testifies to the fact that the throne of God is fixed immediately above the firmament, the dome over the earth, and that the dome that connects the earth to the throne of God, does indeed make the earth the footstool of God. Now let's see how God decorated the firmament. So, the firmament of our heaven is directly under the feet of God. And God has given to us, a container to incubate, and preserve the life to be contained therein. And it was finished on the second day. Then, on the third day, the earth appeared out from the water.
but there were no lights in the firmament, to give light unto the earth. There was no sun, moon, and stars, established to give a course of lights, to maintain a cycle of day and night. But on the fourth day, God put forth a blue sky in the firmament, and mingled among that blue sky, He set up the sun, moon, and stars, to run a certain course, that they will never deviate from, and to give light upon the earth. And that blue sky was also to be a veil, to cover God's reality, from our reality. But at His second coming, that blue sky veil will be dissolved, and every eye shall see His appearing. In closing, I want to bring one other thing to your attention, concerning the firmament. Let's start off with a blank water and sky canvas. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Before God created the earth, there was only water and air, or sky. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of that water. The face of anything is the surface of that thing, and the face or surface of that water was flat. In fact, that flat water surface is what God built His kingdom upon, before the earth was. Then, God created a miniature resemblance of His house, beginning again with water and air. But to achieve that, He first had to construct a container to prevent the air from escaping, and to prevent the water from running its bounds. Today, if man was able to reach and destroy the firmament, our contained air would vanish, and our water would mingle with the outside water. Thus, removing the face, or the flatness of the contained water, which is only achieved by the presence of the firmament. Therefore, in creating the firmament, he created a pocket, of contained water and air, in a controlled environment, where the water became flat with no curvature, just as the waters above in his kingdom. In other words, if there is no firmament around us, there would be no us. And neither could there be another flat surface of water, except the one God set for himself, and his kingdom, before the earth was. Once Jesus returns, he will reveal to us that the world is flat and not spinning, and that the earth has a dome over it. He will reveal that he is the creator of man, and we didn't arrive through evolution. All these things that are now hidden from us, by our government, and science, in order that they can maintain control over us, with fear and deception. If you would like to learn the truths of God, while you are alive on the earth now. Tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe He was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe He was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart. Then, through a deep study of His Word, and maintaining a close relationship with Him. You will begin to see the treasures in His Word, that is hidden from others. Thanks for watching. Personally, I see the wisdom of God, in the steps He took, to create the firmament, the earth, and man. I see no wisdom in a Big Bang, that supposedly came to order, such intricate things. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Amen.